I can hear everyone at home being like, she didn't cook that. No, I did not. This is not cooked, nor are the egg whites cooked. So if you are at all concerned about raw eggs, don't make this. <laughs> There's not really a good pasteurization option. Hi everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I have probably my favorite recipe from my favorite chapter of What's for Dessert. It's from the frozen desserts chapter and it's my coffee stracciatella semifredo. Really easy to assemble. All you need is a hand mixer and it becomes this kind of like delightful frozen treat. Semifredo is an Italian word, means half frozen. It really refers to technically a frozen mousse, but it's really kind of a perfect classic Italian frozen dessert. It is basically a kind of no churn ice cream. You could do any flavor you want. So I love this kind of coffee version. And then stracciatella in the name refers to the way that chocolate is like incorporated into the recipe. So stracciatella means little shreds. You get these really fine melt in your mouth shreds of chocolate. So it's just very, very texturally satisfying. And there's no better frozen dessert than a coffee frozen dessert. What I love about semifredo in particular is how few ingredients it starts with because the the point of the recipe is that we're incorporating a lot of air into all the ingredients to make this like super airy light melt in your mouth frozen dessert and it's like you look at this and you're like where's the rest of the ingredients like what else what else goes in here and this is it so i have you know really really few ingredients and it transforms into this incredible kind of like frozen confection we're starting with two cups of heavy cream that's really kind of the base of the recipe I have two ounces here of melted chocolate, which is just kind of cooling. You don't want it to cool all the way, like so it hardens, but just so it's not hot. A tablespoon of instant espresso, a little bit of kosher salt, two large eggs, some vanilla extract, and then sugar, which I have divided because some of it goes in one place and some of it goes into another. As far as special equipment, the main thing that you'll need is a hand mixer. You could do all of this in a stand mixer, it's really up to you. Then importantly, you'll need a loaf pan, preferably metal, I only have one metal loaf pan and it's already in the freezer with a Stracciatella semifredo I made last night. So here I just have a glass one and you can see that I have lined it in plastic wrap. And then the only other thing that might sort of present like a, a an equipment challenge is that you need sufficient bowl space. So I have two medium bowls and one large bowl because I have three components that I'm gonna all whip separately and then they get folded together and then that becomes your semifredo. I made one batch of the semifredo last night so it could freeze and set up. And for that one, I just microwaved the chocolate in a glass bowl, of course, on like low power and 30 second bursts. This one I melted over a double boiler in my little saucepan over there. It's getting a little bit thick. You have, want to be able to drizzle it. So I'm gonna just set it back over. The saucepan is off the heat, but I'm just gonna set it over the warm water so it gets a little more fluid. You just don't want it to be very, very hot. The first step actually is to line your pan, which I've already done, and go ahead and stick it in the freezer. If you're using a metal pan, the reason that's useful is because the metal will cool down super fast and get really cold, and it will help to set up your semifredo faster. This one's glass, it's not gonna get as cold, but just for the sake of the recipe, I'm gonna put it in the freezer. Where am I gonna put it is the question. I have my two medium bowls, which are gonna come later for my eggs. The first thing I'm gonna do in my large bowl is whip my heavy cream. So I'm using two cups of heavy cream, which is super convenient because it's just a full pint. Make sure it's cold. That's kind of number one when you're whipping cream is it has to be cold. And I'm not sweetening this. All that, the sugar comes later and the other components gets mixed in. But this is really kind of the base of the recipe. So I have my hand mixer plugged in. It's great to work in a really large bowl like this, and I'm gonna be mixing everything in this bowl, so it's good to have that extra room. So I'm gonna take this to firm peaks. That's gonna kinda of give it maximum stability and maximum air, but not any further. And I wanna start off on kind of medium low speed, and then as the cream thickens, I can increase the speed. If I go full blast, I end up splattering a lot around. I'm at like soft peaks right now. You can see that 
the surface is pretty flat and it is just sort of barely holds a little bit of volume. So once you get to soft peaks, you're just, you're not very far away from medium and then firm peaks. So I'll show you how it changes. We're looking for good volume, obviously a literal peak, which I will demonstrate. But we're also looking for, like you know what's happening because you get really um, sharp trails left by the beaters. And it shouldn't have too much movement on its own inside the bowl. Like it, it should be nice and firm. So I'm about there. That's a pretty firm peak. You don't want to overbeat because all the little fat particles that are in the cream start to clump together and you get something grainy. And then if you go really too far, then you're like halfway to butter and you don't want that. So stop short of that. We have this nice, like sort of dense light mixture. So here's that chocolate. I was just kind of keeping it in a slightly warm spot so that it remains fluid, but you want it to be mostly cooled. You don't want it to be really hot. When you get like a stracciatella gelato, if you've ever been to Italy or any like good gelato place, um, that texture is achieved by basically streaming melted chocolate into the gelato machine as it's spinning. And it's kind of like hitting that cold base and solidifying and then it's getting churned around so you get these irregular particles, some of which are very, very fine and then they melt on your tongue and it's incredible. I'm obviously not doing that here because I'm not churning it. So here is what I do to achieve a similar stracciatella texture. I am going to drizzle all of this chocolate onto the surface of my cream. This is why you wanna use a large bowl so I have a nice big surface area. And I'm just gonna drizzle like crisscross back and forth. So I just am using all of the chocolate. So you'll cover a decent amount of the cream with it. You can just scrape in any last bits. And you can see that the chocolate has hit that cold cream and has already started to solidify. That's what we want. We want it to be solid so that when I go to mix it again, it breaks apart. And you can see I have some really, really fine streaks and those are gonna turn into just like little teeny tiny little pieces and then some larger areas that are gonna turn into like a bigger chocolate chip. So that's what you want. The bowl is still really cold, but I'm gonna pop this back into the fridge so it can stay cold and so any of those larger pockets of chocolate can firm up while I mix the other two components. Let's go on to hair for duck confit. So I don't have to wash the beaters. I'm gonna now move on to my egg components. So I have a yolk mixture and an egg white mixture. So the first thing I'll do is separate my eggs, just two eggs. And the reason you get such like an aerated light mixture is because you're incorporating so much air into all the components, the yolks and the whites and the cream. So my eggs are at room temp. If you want to go ahead and separate them while they're cold from the fridge, you tend to get less breakage of the yolk that way. Um, and what you don't want is any yolk in the whites because that's gonna inhibit their whipping. If you need to, go ahead and separate them and then let them come to room temp. You'll get better whipping and aeration of whites if they're room temp. So I'm gonna set the whites over here because that comes later. And now I'm gonna make my yolk mixture. I'm gonna add a quarter cup of granulated sugar a tablespoon of instant espresso powder. You could also use like dehydrated, like instant coffee granules too. That's gonna give it a lot of coffee flavor. I'm not incorporating coffee in liquid form because it adds too much water to your mixture and then you end up with something icy and hard rather than like soft and kind of melty. Then some kosher salt. Beaters can have a little bit of cream on it from before, I don't have to wash them. I am gonna whip this. Oh wait, I forgot the vanilla extract. <laughs> I was wondering why that was sitting over here still. I think most people think about whipping egg whites, but you can also whip yolks. Of course, they're not gonna get the same volume that you get from the egg whites, but they will become light and pale. So that's what we're going for. It's also through this process that the moisture in the yolk is going to dissolve that powdered espresso. So I'm gonna beat this on high speed until the yolks have lightened in color. The whole mixture is kind of like light and moussey and it's gonna make a ribbon. So you'll see, I'll show you, but this is gonna take maybe like four minutes. After a few minutes of mixing, I have this really thick kind of pale yolk mixture, which looks great. You can see that when I let it kind of fall back onto itself, 
it makes a little bit of a ribbon. It's kind of hard to get the visual with these beaters, but there's still little tiny granules of the powdered espresso, but those they, they tend to kind of just dissolve once the whole mixture is assembled. Now I'm gonna do a quick change out and bring over my two egg whites, plus now I have three tablespoons of sugar. But before I whip this, I have to clean the beaters because now there's like cream and yolk mixture on the beaters and that has fat in it and I don't want any fat in my egg whites because that's gonna inhibit whipping. So give these a good clean. Ah. So now I reserved some of the sugar in the recipe because when you beat egg whites, adding sugar will stabilize them. So when you add, when you beat egg whites, you're denaturing the proteins and it's capable then of trapping air, but it's unstable. So to increase the stability, we add a little bit of sugar. So that's why some sugar with the yolks, some with the whites. And now it's always a good idea when you're whipping egg whites to start on low speed to break them up a little bit. And then once they get a little bit foamy and start to turn white and opaque, I'll start to add my sugar. But with only two egg whites, it whips pretty fast. So now it's a little white and foamy, so now I'm gonna gradually add my sugar. And I can turn up the speed. So I'm pretty much at medium peaks. It holds its shape well. And when I pull up the beaters, I get peaks, but they kind of droop over. So that's like a medium peak. So now my egg whites are done. This is gonna be set aside. I'm gonna keep my hand mixer handy because I'm gonna use it for the next step, which is to start incorporating my yolks and my whites into that whipped cream base and to make the stracciatella. The bowl is super cold. You can see that all of that chocolate has hardened on the surface of the cream. So now what I'm gonna do is, I need a spatula. The first step in mixing everything together is to scrape that thick yolk mixture into the bowl with the whipped cream. With that yolk mixture in there, first of all, this looks so cool. Now is the fun part where I'm going to beat this mixture until I see uh, firm peaks form again, because the yolk mixture is gonna loosen it a little bit. And by beating it, I'm also breaking up all that chocolate into little bits. So that's gonna form that kind of stracciatella texture. So I don't have to wash it with the egg whites on there. So back in. Okay, we're looking pretty firm here. Look at how like delicious and smooth and creamy it looks. I have super fine little pieces of chocolate and then in some places I have like a bigger piece. I'm officially done with the mixer. It has served us well. And now the last step is folding in your beaten egg whites. So all at once, all in, go my egg whites. So this is adding a little bit of additional sweetness, but mostly texture. It's just adding all of that air. So now uh, this nice folding motion, this part is so beautiful. And basically what I've, what I've made is mousse. So if I chilled this, I would have like a coffee mousse. And if I froze it, I got semi-fredo. And folding is really the method that you wanna use to gently incorporate anything really airy to preserve all of that air. It's like we worked pretty hard beating all those components separately to make them super airy. So I'm gonna grab my frozen loaf pan, go ahead and smooth it in. This is a, you know, a decent amount of volume. We made a good amount of semi-fredo and it was all from just basically two cups of cream and two eggs, pretty impressive. So I'm just smoothing this all around. Look at how light it looks. I don't actually need to focus too much on smoothing on the surface because I'm going to take the overhanging plastic, which I left several inches on all four sides. And I'm gonna wrap it up and around the semi-fredo because when you put stuff in the freezer, it can really quickly take on like an off flavor, like a freezer flavor. So I lined this with two crisscross pieces of plastic. So one going this way and one going this way. So, and then I'm just kind of gently pressing it down onto the surface. So now basically the semi-fredo is done. It just has to go back into the freezer so it has an opportunity to freeze solid, which should take at least four hours. So I recommend absolutely doing this the day before if you want to serve it, or at the very least the morning before, you know, if we want to serve it in the evening. Um, and I have one that I made last night. So I know it's frozen solid. I'm going to pull it out and grab my ice cream scoop so we can taste it. So I'm just uncovering it. I'm just gonna leave it actually inside the loaf pan. So you can let it soften a little bit at room temp, but it's actually scoopable 
when completely frozen solid. And so I prefer to scoop it when it's really cold and then I like it to get a little bit melty inside the bowl. <laughs> Maybe not the ideal scoop for this. Archie, don't think about it. Don't do it, kitty. He knows when I'm like busy. You can see it kind of has the like scoopability of ice cream and at where I've scooped, you can see all the different pieces of chocolate. Like this is like a perfect stracciatella consistency. It's like this little kind of fine chip. It's gonna like melt as soon as I eat it. Delish. It's getting a little bit melty. But one great thing about semifredo as opposed to ice cream is that even when it sort of approaches room temp and starts to warm up, it still kind of maintains its shape. So it doesn't get, you know, go back to like liquid form like ice cream. Mm. When you can deploy eggs in this way where you're having like the yolks and the whites separate and you're using beaten egg whites, you can achieve such incredible texture. And it's that lightness plus the kind of intensity that you get from the chocolate, but then like how melty it gets. See that texture? It's just so good. And anyone that knows me knows I love coffee desserts like more than anything when they're cold. Mm. So creamy, so light. So definitely one of my favorite desserts in my favorite chapter in What's for Dessert because it's just so delicious and fun to make and special. So thank you so much for watching. We're going to bring you more episodes of Dessert Person, more recipes from What's for Dessert, and don't forget to like and subscribe.